There's my side, there's the other side. There's this side, there's that side. They're opposites. The Swindlin Queers, binary of harmonic opposites. The battle took its toll on all of us. It was impossible to avoid. We all got hit with debris. I guess if you didn't know them, or kept your music up, or lived in a different dorm, but if you knew who they were, you knew it was happening. And some of us knew them. In the spring semester of 2017, the University of Redlands was the location of one of the most dramatic breakups of a queer country punk band in 21st century Southern California private university history. The band, the Swindlin' Queers. Time skips, okay. fourth scripture, yeah. four flavors, yeah. four days, four like, sides. Like, I mean. Originally formed as a committee to rank the quality of the nearest Thai restaurants, the Swindlin' Queers consisted of a group of students from the University of Redlands who all happened to live in the same dorm. Briar Gaylord, a singer and guitarist formerly of the band Side Effects May Vary, rises to command the group. Snetch Meeb, third-year music student, ukulele aficionado, and self-described pacifist, quickly joins. Camera Dalmi, a person with no musical talent, or really any talent in anything that would be useful in creating and running a band, enrolls as well. Spruce Pocket, a cellist, formerly of Undersexual Homotones, formerly of The Nude Muskrats, formerly of Corn Juice, formerly of the Voyeuristic Grandmas, formerly of the Crying Eyebrows, formerly of Armpit Pancake, joins. Lupus, an unwise philosophy student, joins with the hope of spreading the message of something called Time Cube. Briar takes a liking to his abstruse and confusing lyrics and just runs with it. The group came to their most well-known configuration, that of a queer country punk band, after a late-night philosophy discussion went on too long and they all got, quote, much too loopy. They produced their first album in one night. So this is a song from my first record, Fictitious Queer Same-Sex Transformation, and it is entitled Cyclops Mentality. One, two, oh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> The group's first album was an instant hit among those who could find it. To spread the message of their music, but without selling out, the Swindlin' Queers spread out their numbers to cover more ground. Each band member was armed with a single copy of the new cassette and sent out on their mission. Camera loses theirs before leaving the room. Lupus retreats to familiar ground, a library. He hides the tape among the philosophy books. Snitch takes theirs to the campus radio station. They leave the tape at the door, not wanting to impose. The tape is never played. Briar takes their tape to the school's art building, believing only a true artist could understand the meaning of their music. Spruce opts for strategy. Rather than leaving her tape lying around, she attempts to mail the tape to a music studio. The band does not hear back from any producers. The group quickly gains attention from people who already know all the members, and also from students trying to study nearby. So you listen to the Swimming Queers, and then you look at their lineup, and it turns out most of them are completely untrained, and you're like, whoa, what? That's crazy. And then you think about it, and, it, and well, yeah, that, that makes sense. Everybody ready? Fuck yeah! yeah! Ready? The group quickly produces a second album, this time entitled Earth Cubed. The band's popularity soars to a whopping audience of three, but things do not stay calm forever. On March 17th, the Swindlin' Queers gathered to record their third album, titled You Snot Brains Will Know Hell for Ignoring Time Cube. Three days later, the same room would be witness to their destruction. 
They would leave behind shockwaves of pain, confusion, and an almost incomprehensible philosophy. The first divide is between Briar and Spruce. Okay, so Snatch and I are here. It's three in the morning. We're in the practice room and watching currently the most horrible thing I've ever fucking seen. It's beautiful. All right, you ready? Check this out. Just, just look, just look at that. Just look at all of that. <sighs> at least they're having a good time. I'm, I guess, Snatch, but don't you sometimes feel like these people are disrespecting the integrity of Time Cube? Just Time Cube is such a fundamental part of how we, how we make music and how we yeah. treat this space. Like it's almost like they don't think time is cubular. Who? Oh, it's Briar. Be good. Yeah, okay, let's see what happens now. What the fuck are you doing? They've been so- I'm, oh. I'm uh, writing a song. Okay, this is way more Never interesting. Never Briar? Yeah. <laughs> Never what you. It's- Holy you shit. Who I mean, told you you could Oh my god, Snatch. Is this for our band? I the mean, band in be. which I am the main lyricist? <laughs> Just because you're the main lyricist doesn't mean you have to be the only lyricist. Oh, I don't think that's going to be that's best, finally yes. happening. Well, your songs might suck. No, no, no. Well, your songs are totally incomprehensible. My lyrics might incomprehensible. They're about time cube. My lyrics might suck, but at least people would understand them. Oh my god. That sounds commercial. You sound like you're being commercial. You sound like you're being a sellout. Do you want to be a sellout? I mean, I want to make money. Oh, they're really pulling out all the stuff. You're here to make money? I thought we were here to spread the message. Lucas, back me up. You can do both, Briar. I'm just going to stay out of this one. You don't have to do both. You can do both. Yes, listen. Mm -hmm. No one's going to hear okay, your yeah, message if it's in these yeah. incomprehensible I mean, lyrics. Maybe if they start getting violent, it's pretty tell sometimes. I can't even call them melodies. There is no melody. No, but your lyrics, lyrics are dumb. Yeah. They're bad. They're stupid. You're a snob, friend. At least they're understandable. Whoa, 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 guys, guys. Can we just take you out of the storm? You have addicts that are plugging your stupid acoustic guitar like a fucking I can't hamster. Not. Oh, okay. I don't know. The first battle finishes with neither side the victor. We were all caught up in it. All of us. You could feel it in the air after that first night. I don't think I could ever explain that feeling. Waiting for the other shoe to drop. If you weren't there, you really could never know. Briar sends their demands in a series of text messages to Spruce. You need to apologize for wasting our time last night. You need to apologize for never listening to the rest of us or listening to the album Camera and I made last week on our own. An early sign of turmoil. Unbeknownst to the rest of the swindling queers, Camera and Spruce had previously defected for a week to focus on their own project, an album entitled Crunchy Captain. The tape contained a series of five songs, all designed to convince actor Chris Evans to befriend the duo. Chris Evans declined to comment. You shouldn't have wasted time on that project. The swindling queers in our message of Time Cube is more important than some popular mainstream celebrity. Horrified at the injustice, Spruce brings evidence of Briar's slander to Camera. The two form an alliance, and Camera rises to the position of Spruce's second-in-command. The two attempt to devise a strategy to bring Snetch and Lupus onto their side. Okay, fucking Spruce and Briar are fighting again and trying to get people to take sides and... Okay, I'm just gonna show you this shit. Look at this. Look, look at this. What? What is this? They really think this is gonna work? It doesn't work. Yay! I'm so excited about okay, this. We're gonna, we're do gonna this have a band again. For sure. Definitely. Just gotta remind them what it's about. Definitely. Yes. Okay. Oh! Hey! Hey! hey I made that! Hey, get that back! I made that for Snatch! We're trying to get Snatch on our side because Stop it's the right trying side. To steal my band members! Your band members! Our band, band members! Our band members! I started this band. Well, I made it. Uh, you're just superfluous. I made it a good band. You wish. Get us, Get us, Bruce. 
Get him! John! You guys! Come on! What are you doing? Stop it! Whoa, whoa, hey, Fighting! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Go Spruce! Whoa, whoa. Team Spruce! Whoa, whoa. Get him! Get him! March 19th. The swindling queers gather once more at Lupus's behest. This doesn't have to be painful. We don't have to record any more albums. Let's just sit together here four hours, finish the job. Please? Listen. Listen. We first formed this band. We all agreed that the most important thing is spreading the word of Time Cube. But I feel like this conflict, we've forgotten that. Can we please? I agree with Lupus. True art has a message. It has aesthetic value. I'm not here to make friends. Well, a message never going to be heard if it's incomprehensible. It's friends. Jesus Christ. Snatch, you're on my side, right? That's too much pressure for me. I'm on your side. Thank you, Camera. You're the only sane person in this band. No. So are we going to play? Yeah, let's play. Ready? One, One two, two, three, two, three, two, two, one, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, three, four! They did finish their album. I got their used snot brains as soon as it came out. It's phenomenal what they can do, even when they're fighting. The final battle decides the fate of the group. The swindling queers dissolve. The fight now null. Looking back, I can't believe it got as bad as it did. That fight was really the best thing that could have happened to us, though. I mean, they were all holding me back. Spruce? No, Spruce and I haven't spoken in years. I'm not mad anymore. We just don't really talk. Now that I've had the time to myself, I've been working on my own project. Uh, it's entitled Never Briar. It's mixed media spoken word collage art. Which is really more my aesthetic anyways. I was thinking about my time in the band a couple days ago, and, well, it was nice. I got to be with people who respected me as a musician, and I respected them as musicians. Sure, it got rough at the end, but I wouldn't have traded it for anything. It's strange, looking back, that it lasted as long as it did. I think it was doomed from the outset, but the most important thing is that the message, our message, lives on. Time Cube, you know? Time Cube. Uh, so what mm -hmm. if we group? Um, um, do, you, do you want to tell them what we've been no, doing? Uh, well, mostly Camera and I have started our own project and we're working on outreach. Reaching out. To Chris Evans, obviously. Yeah. I mean, the group, it wasn't great, but, oh God, no. but it helped us find each other. Yeah. Um, and We have the same goals. It's been great. We're going to help each other find Chris Evans. I so. mean, who, who wouldn't want to meet Thor? What? Hey, Camera. Uh, Briar wants to know if they can borrow your scissors. After three albums, a hit single, and 12 blog posts reviewing different Thai food restaurants around San Bernardino County, the swindling queers return to being a group of people who no longer share a dream, just a dorm and their memories. So from our sophomore record, Earth Cubed, this is Ineffable Transcendence. <laughs>
Thanks a lot.